Hello and welcome back to Jurassic World Evolution 2 where today I'll be showing you the first part of probably what's going to be maybe a three part, four part series on my new park build which is a Jurassic Alpine Ski Resort I'm pretty sure is what I'm going to call it and of course it is on the Northwest USA map. Now if you know my channel you may be wondering well, you've done this park before and you'd be right. So let me explain. What I'm pretty much doing here is I'm going back through all my old parks and unfortunately I deleted the save for this original park here, but you can go and watch the original tour on my uh, channel. But um, what, what I'm like looking at doing is going through all my old parks, all my favorite old parks and kind of looking at ways which I can improve them uh, namely just on their design because they're really really simple so I'm trying to look at ways just to make them that much more interesting you know just make them uh, a little bit more aesthetically pleasing rather than just the simple path work with really repetitive enclosures and not much originality to it. So uh, that's what I wanted to go for here. And so far on this first part, this whole top section that you're seeing um, probably took me all in all about three hours, which is a long time for uh, Jurassic World Evolution 2, but that's a lot of ground that I covered and uh, also it's a lot of decoration work by the end of this it's going to seem pretty bare but i did put in a lot of decorations off camera so you are gonna see that and it's uh it's pretty insane the amount of decorations just in this bit here but um yeah i'm really happy with how it's turned out so far it's just making sure that it looks good the whole way through um so yeah future parks with this kind of updated look i guess you can say will be pretty much all my past parks except for my germany coastal resort i'll probably if i go back to germany and build a park on there which i probably will do at some point um that will be taking pretty much no inspiration from that original park because if i'm being honest i'm not a huge fan of that one it had like a nice start but then it fizzled out really quick um the other one i'd be kind of steering away from is my i let fate decide my park park which i think i called the uh united kingdom cliffside resort or something or cliffside getaway something like that some some i don't know tacky name like that but um yeah that's it's those are the two that i think i'm gonna stay away from but things like my site b research facility that's one that i know people like i really liked and now from update three having the um decorative uh, facility buildings i guess you can say eh, the, the, the decorative facility buildings we'll call them that now having them in the game it's going to make it a whole lot more interesting and i can look back at what i did and look at ways that i can improve that which should be really good um, my Grand Canyon Dinosaur Park, that will probably make a return. Uh, what are some, what are some, and my, um, Jurassic Park 2022, I, I forgot the name, but, uh, yeah, the Jurassic Park 2022 is definitely a park I want to redo. That's probably one of my favorite parks. They're all really good parks. I like them all in their own way, even if they are very simple, they're special to me in their own way so i'm looking forward to tackling those challenges as well as continuing on with my uh, 94 species park build which you saw earlier in the week part three whether that is a live stream or a uh, video i'm not too sure because i am recording this before i do part three but uh yeah this will be coming out after part three unless something horrible goes wrong um so i don't really want to make any promises but uh, yeah, anyway, going back to this park, you know me, I like to make little stories behind the parks. And for this one, I wanted it to be my original park, right? The uh, Jurassic Park Alpine Resort. I want it to be like, you know, they went out of business in a way. Um, so, you know, they just weren't getting the funding. People weren't being drawn here because it was so remote so out of the way that yes you are having the appeal of dinosaurs but because it's so far out the way 
you have to pay a lot more money to get there and also it's just much more of a hassle to get there so people weren't really coming to the park and the upkeep just got too expensive and the park went under but with this park it's going to have more attractions to draw more crowds in it's going to have like a system where the flights to the northwest of the usa are included uh sorry the flight to the park from wherever they go to from wherever they're flying from to get to the northwest of the usa um god <laughs> Um, and the cost of the trip to actually get to the park is all included, so um, it's all good if that makes sense. I don't know, I explained that really poorly, but um, yeah, so it, this is like building from the roots of that park. Um, and also it is a ski resort, so what I'm kind of doing is the two like shorter hills um, that separate the middle section and the lower section. I'm gonna make that a ski area so um, it's gonna be like pretending of obviously there's no ski attraction or anything but pretending it's like a hill for people to be able to ski down or maybe you know zipline down or something I'm not too sure yet I think I'm gonna go down the route of skiing plus there's gonna be other attractions as well as the dinosaurs You'll notice off in the corner too of uh, this top section that I've got a tour going which is going to connect this top part with the bottom part and I think I'm going to do the same um, for like the middle section and the lower section because I don't know I don't want to use monorails um, because they, they just take up a lot of space and this park is not a lot of space despite its incredible views it does not have a lot of space which i'm fine with i you know like a bit of a challenge when it comes to these sandbox builds so uh having a lack of space is not too not too bad in my opinion i don't mind that and also i didn't notice before but some of the details on this like on this map are insane and i'm talking more about the audio details because as you're playing you can hear like the howls of wolves and like the cries I guess of like elks or something the calls of elks um, it's just yeah and birds and stuff you can hear I don't know eagles or falcons or hawks or whatever but you can hear birds it's like really it feels like you're building out in the wilderness it doesn't feel like you know this is a set area kind of sectioned off it does feel like you're building out in the wilderness which is uh, really cool in my opinion but also something I want to mention is I've been having this weird lag thing. I think I mentioned this on my part two live stream, but there's this, my, my computer, cause it's not just in Jurassic World Evolution 2. Luckily it doesn't really translate on the um, speed build, which is pretty good, but there, there's times when I just lose tons of frames. I'll be at a nice like 60 FPS, and then all of a sudden it will drop down to like 10 frames per second. And it'll only last a few seconds and it ha happens every now and again, but it's really weird. Um, but yeah, just thought I'd mention that. You'll see in a bit, or maybe now, or maybe it's already happened, because I actually don't have the video up while I'm doing this, which is probably a bit of a mistake, but oh well. When I'm doing these kind of thicker parts, because I think using thick, like not just having one main thoroughfare, maybe using two or three looks a lot more, looks a lot nicer, and if you think about real theme parks, they do have those um really wide paths um a tip i have if you're going to curve it is at the end of each um section you should like build kind of off on like the 90 degree angle i guess you can say just two smaller things that allow your the other paths say if you're doing two or we'll say we're doing three because that's the best example i have here um so it allows the other two adjacent paths to come to the same point if that makes sense so you'll see me doing it but um yeah that's a good recommendation to make it you know all flow the same and it ends up looking really nice um and my tip also for that would be do it on the like outside path right so if you're say you know doing this kind of noodle kind of swirly curvy thing if you're gonna do that uh, having the paths coming out the sides to join each one. I'd start from the side that has the That is on the outside so because that's gonna have the 
uh, largest circumference, I guess you can say. So it's going to mean that all the points come together really nicely. If that makes sense, again, you'll see me doing it. So it should look fine. Um, but yeah, the speed build here is coming to an end. Um, and I can't think of much to say. I think there's two or three minutes left on the speed build. I'll take you into the park too. Don't worry. I'll give you a little bit of a guide. Uh, yeah, a little bit of a guided tour and a few overview shots because what I want to do for these upcoming speed builds and park builds is I'll give you a guided tour after every uh, speed build um, of what I've done. And then for like the final video, it'll just be a, um, you know, an unguided tour. Just a really nice showcase of the park without me flapping my gums for 10, 15 minutes. But uh, yeah, like I said, I'm going to sign off for the speed build bit and I will see you in the park. So here we are in the park and like I said, I have fully decorated this area or decorated it to the point where I'm happy with how it looks. Maybe I'll go back later and maybe tweak a few things, move a few things around. But for now, this is the final product and I think it's turned out really well. I'm really happy with it and there's only one thing left to do now and that is open the park. So. Voila, there it is. Not much fanfare, but off the helicopter goes. Pick up our first few guests and, uh, yeah, make this park really come to life. But, yeah, I'm really happy with what I've done here so far. So, let us take the tour. Now, I'm curious to see if we get our uh, lag thing, or the lag thing I was talking about. Uh, I wonder if that's going to happen here, but uh, we'll see. Actually, I haven't finished this. I originally was going to leave the tables and stuff just to go up to halfway but I think I'm gonna make them go all the way around just make it a bit more continuous but we've got our amenity buildings here um, all with the same coloring because it just brings that flow to the park with a kind of alpine that like olivey green kind of color looks really nice with the uh, greenish yellow I guess you can say and browns it, it looks, looks good I like it can't remember what I put for the um, colors for at night but uh i guess i'll see in a bit i'll show you nighttime i guess um but if we come through here we come to our first enclosure which is stegosaurus and stiggy moloch uh which you can't get a great look view of here so we're gonna keep going i'll go up there in a sec to our ceratosaurus but if we go over here we should get a better view of them all and yeah there we go still can't really see any stiggy molochs though Oh yeah, there you go. 
We've got binoculars apparently. But yeah, nice enclosure. This is just uh, not so much theming to the enclosures. I think they look nice. I'm confident in my ability to build enclosures, uh, build nice enclosures anyway. I always like the look of the enclosures I build, but I hope to go for more diverse enclosures with this build, not all the same. If we go over to this hotel, you get a lovely view of the mountains here. Just absolutely gorgeous. The views on this map are insane. They're so good. I love them so much. Like I said, we've used quite a few decorations. Um, not just in like these ones, but also, uh, you know, plants and stuff. Just to, yeah, make it feel a bit more natural in some ways. And, you know, fill up the space so it's not so barren. I wanted to leave this open because, you know, you've got multiple directions that people are going. They're going over the viewing towers, the galleries there, or up to the Ceratosaurus enclosure here. But before we go to the Cerratos, I know I keep teasing you with them. We're going to head over here to a little coffee shop, a little cafe with a nice little seating area next to our Ceratosaurus. You get a good view of the Cerratos just doing their own thing while you have your morning, midday or afternoon coffee at our... Uh, non-branded coffee shop a non-branded cafe no no starbucks here um unfortunately they didn't want to come here after the last incident at uh, jurassic world in 2015 but if we come over here and finally see our ceratosaurus so we've got one with my favorite skin the something and rana and we've also got one with the default skin which is probably my second favorite I do like the Cerratos. They didn't make it into my top 10, but if I were to like redo it at some point, I wouldn't be surprised if they came into my top 10. They're in my top five in the first game. And uh, yeah, I, I just love them a lot. I love the Cerratos. I don't use them as often as I used to or as often as I did in the first game. But uh, there's just so many good dinosaurs in this one, in this version of the game. I will give you some closer looks at the dinosaurs, but first we'll just do this kind of wandering through that every... Every other Jurassic World Evolution player seems to do. We're going to head over here because this is where you kind of get the best view. Even though there's only Pro Ceratosaurus in here. So it's probably better if we go in here. There we go. Oh, we got one there. We've got some crossing the little uh, water body that we have in there. But once you're done here, you know, in this uh, main bit, you have this nice nature area. And it's like nice with, like ponds and whatnot puddles but yeah you go through here and this is how you get to our jurassic tour that takes you down to the next part of the park obviously there's nothing here that there's no dinosaurs in there at the moment we'll do that in the next speed build but uh there is a toilet here just in case you uh need to go before you get on or once you've come off uh you've got an you've got the convenience of having a bathroom right there um, but yeah, before I head off, before I leave you, I'm going to show you the dinosaurs first. So we're going to go to our Stegosaurus, a very unhappy Stegosaurus as you can see. But if I was trying, I reckon I could make them uh, be happy. Uh, maybe not. Maybe. I don't know. I reckon that I could make them happy with this area. But as you can see, we've got some Lost World Stegos here, a couple of them. I think this is just a random skin, I believe. And then we've got a couple stegosaurs with my favorite skin, which is the, pull it up. It's the Limpopo with bleh, Limpopo River with Chow Karana. If you want to see my favorite skins for every dinosaur, you can check out the videos I've done on them. For our Stiggy Molochs, uh, we have my favorite skin for the Stiggy Moloch here, which is the Death Valley, bleh, Death Valley and Chow Karana. The orange and the blue looks so nice. Um, but yeah, we got a few of them, a couple of them, I think. Yeah, we got three of them. We've got, and then the rest are all just random skins. That one's not too bad. This one would be nice if it didn't have like the the green or it didn't have the orange. It, it should have decided on one of the other, one or the other. But uh, they're not bad. A little stiggies. So that's the stiggy Morlock. If we head over the gap here, we have our Proceratosaurus. So many nice skins for this dinosaur. I want to use it so much more than I do. We'll see. This one's nice. I like that one. Oh god, where are we? This one's my favorite. My favorite, uh, in like overall. This is my favorite Proceratosaurus skin. 
really nice with just that glowing blue, almost glowing I should say, but that really deep, not deep, but like vibrant blue, that really bright blue looks really nice. We got a couple of them. Um, another one with that same coloring, just not the uh, same skin color, but the same pattern. Um, another, they're just so great. Their colors look so nice. Green one here. Fit well in a tropical environment, that one would. Uh, I believe this is the last one, a nice orange one. Fit well in a desert, that one. Uh, yeah, have we come back around now? Yeah, we have. I'll show you the skin for this one if you're interested. It is Limpopo River with Pelo Phylax. Um, over to our Cerrados now. Uh, where are they? Alright, we got Sarah here because, I don't know, it just... I don't know. I, I, I went through this dinosaur, I was like, hmm, Isla Sauna. Sarah Harding. We're gonna name it Sarah. It's the only one that I've named. I, um... Yeah, I may, I may pull up like a random name generator and go ahead and name all the dinosaurs. And maybe base it on their, uh, region where they come from. Kind of like in, uh, Prehistoric Kingdom. How, you know, their names depend on where the, in the world that they're found. So we've got, I guess Sarah, I guess you can say it's like an American name. Sarah Harding, she was American, so there you go. Uh, so we get like some American and Spanish names for our Cerritos, but for Sarah, it's just the default skin, which again is probably my second favorite, only to the... Oh, we got Jin here. Maybe I did go through on a random ge name generator. With this one. No. I had Star Wars on the brain, that's right, and I was like, hmm, Jin Erso. You don't see that name a lot, so this one's Jin. Uh, this is the Gambia River Basin with Rana. Yeah, this one doesn't have a name. This one's Svalbard and Lithobates. I believe I was meant to choose a different um, thing for this, not Lithobates, something else. And this one um, is another one that I actually chose. I went through on Ceratosaurus and picked some nice skins, some skins that I liked. And I really like this one, the Salar del Huasco with Pelo Phylax. But that is going to do it for this one. I uh, really hope you enjoyed the speed build, I hope you enjoy how the park's going, and I hope you're excited for the future of the park, because I know I am. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao!